Hey everybody, this is Jason. Welcome back to my Kerbal Space Program for Complete Newbies tutorial. This is the second part of our mission to Minmus. So uh, in our last in our last video, the first part of this mission, we built ourselves an awesome little spaceship with a lander on top and launched it into Kerbin orbit, and we did a really good job. We are in a very near equatorial orbit and uh, almost circular, doing really couldn't, couldn't have hoped for a better orbit for what we're about to do. So you'll notice we're back here at the, at the uh, Kerbal Space Center. And uh, there's a couple of things I want to kind of show you guys before we go back into flying. So first of all, we're going to go into our settings um, and to, into the difficulty options. Up until now, uh, you may have noticed as we've been going along that there have been green, yellow, and red lines traced between Kerbin and our spaceships. Those represent the communications network, which is a game difficulty feature you can enable or disable as you like. Um, it, it basically means that uh, your ship has to have a clear line of sight to Kerbin in order to maintain good radio communications, which means there's some things you can't do if you don't have communications with the Space Center. Things like creating maneuver nodes. Uh, if we were, say, to go around the back side or the dark side of Minmus, the far side of Minmus, we would be out of the communications network and couldn't actually give our ship commands. So this is a new feature that they added recently to the game. I'm going to go ahead and disable it just by hitting that because what I, I think for the purposes of our tutorial, I, we could easily overcome that obstacle by building some communication satellites and sending them up to create a relay network. But this video is more about the fundamentals of orbital mechanics. And by the time you guys are done with this series, you'll have enough, or you're, you'll have enough knowledge to understand how to build those satellites and get them up there on your own. So I'd rather not get too deep into that. There's other tutorials out there if you want to go learn about how to build a communications network that's effective. I actually don't even prefer playing with that setting, to be honest. Uh, I just find it kind of annoying. <laughs> but uh, especially as you get to some of the outer planets, it just can be a little, uh, a little troublesome. So here we are in the tracking center. You can see our nearly perfect equatorial orbit. We are only slightly, slightly inclined, which is awesome compared to the moon and compared to Minmus. Now, what I wanted to show you guys and why we're here is that Minmus has a very inclined orbit, or certainly much more so than the moon, which is an equatorial orbit around Kerbin, and our ship, which is an, equat which is an equatorial orbit around Kerbin. And when you transfer to Minmus, when you have a transfer out that far, Minmus is going to uh, gonna go about 90 rotate, or uh, excuse me, orbit about 90 more degrees along its route in the time that it takes us to get from here to there. So if we were to launch now, uh, our inclination, we would end up somewhere up here. So we would miss Minmus entirely. We want to try to hit Minmus right when it's around these two nodes, the ascending node and the descending node, which you can't really tell here, but it's when Minmus's orbit crosses our current equatorial orbit. We want to intercept then. So what that means, because we know that Minmus uh, takes about 90 degrees worth of orbit, uh, that's not really an actual term, but um, the time it takes Minmus to travel uh, 90 degrees through its orbit is about the time it takes us to transfer out there. We want Minmus to be here in order to intercept it here. So I'm going to go ahead and speed up time, which you can do here in the tracking station, and you can actually do it much faster than you can as you're just orbiting. You can see I'm at 10,000 now. So I can, I can actually go even faster, but I'm trying to be somewhat precise in what I'm doing. You can see the moon going around Kerbin, and we're going to slow down right about here. Okay, so you can see we've gone ahead, I think, several days at this point, about nine days. And we're going to go back to the hairball, currently orbiting Kerbin. It's a good thing that Kerbals don't require uh, life support, food, or a flushable toilet, because it's great to, that they can just simply be in space and not have to worry about any of that stuff. Let's do a quick resource check to make sure everything's good. We've got a 250 electrical charge. That is exactly what we want. So Annie's hanging out. Um, did we run our experiments or not? I can't remember. 
let's just see if we need to reset those. Ah, oh, we do. All right, well, we might as well just go ahead and go quick EVA and do that now. Back and good to go. All right. So now we are going to plan a maneuver that's going to bring us. So you can see the ascending node and the descending node here that sort of mapped Minmus's orbit because we've got it targeted right now. So this, we're not really doing this in the most efficient way because our periapsis is over here, our apoapsis is over here. So we're going to be burning prograde closer to our apoapsis, but that's okay. The, f the amount of fuel efficiency we're going to lose is not going to be that tragic. So go out past the moon. You want to go about that far. Oh, you can even see we got, yeah, hey, we got our encounter already. That was super easy. So the idea here is that you want to, a minimus periapsis of 401,000 meters. That's not terrible, actually. And how long is it going to take us to get there? 13 days. Okay. So that's not a bad maneuver. Um, I doubt we're actually going to get much better. Uh, so the idea is you just create the maneuver node, you grab, burn, uh, create a prograde burn maneuver to raise your apoapsis. If for some reason you don't get that encounter right off, which is always possible, I think I may have just messed it up. Oh, no, I raised our, lowered our periapsis a little bit. That's okay. So you can actually grab the maneuver node slide it back and forth which changes where you intercept even better so see if I can even refine our all right well 322 this is not as we're planning it right now this is not a precise science so we're gonna intercept Minmus around 322,000 uh, 322, meters. It's pretty good. We got it. And hey, we're departure node in about six minutes. So let's go ahead and swing our ship around to meet our departure node. And you're going to notice uh, it takes our poor little reaction wheel a long time to move our ship, a ship this big. Like it is going slow. So this could be mitigated by adding more reaction wheels, which we haven't unlocked yet, or RCS, which we haven't unlocked yet. But what it means is you can't really swing around and do quick maneuvers on a ship this size with a reaction wheel this small. So it's just something to keep in mind as you're building ships. And as we're moving around, I wanted to, I, just, I guess I just wanted to say, there's no right way to build a ship in this game and you guys will discover your own ways to build ships that work really well for you. This is just one way to build a ship and it's a way that works well for me. I mean I, I always would start kind of working backwards from the last thing you want to do all the way to the first thing you want to do. That's a generally you know that's a solid rule. Otherwise there is not necessarily a single right design for a ship. So feel free to mess around with stuff and see if there's things that just generally work better. I'm going to go ahead and warp us. We're going to swing around Kerbin here, I'm sure. Yep. Three minutes. So I'm going to estimate that burn is going to take about 60 seconds. So we're going to begin our burn at T minus 30. But I'm going to come out of warp here so we can, SAS can correct us a little bit. And I'm going to do the burn from the map screen because I'm going to pay very close attention to how close we come. Because we may need to turn around and correct what we've just done. We will see. So you remember it also took us about 800 meters per second, 840 or whatever it was, of delta V to get out to the moon. And only 900 some more to get all the way out to Minmus. So to get further and further away from Kerbin, it doesn't really take that much in terms of additional delta V. It only takes about a thousand or a thousand fifty or so to fling yourself completely out of Kerbin's sphere of influence. Okay, so I'm going to hit X here as soon as we get a little closer. There we go. Zoop. 
Now I'm burning with shift. I'm actually going to shut the maneuver node off so I'm not confused. Oh, went a little too far out. Uh, that's okay. Now, you know what? I'm just going to show you how to fix what I just did. <laughs> so I'm going to turn around and swing the ship retrograde so I'm pointed away from the apoapsis. And you can even see now that we've burned that much fuel that the ship is turning much faster than it was because it's probably weighs a good third less than it just did. So that reaction wheel can swing us around. I guess it has, excuse me, technically it has less mass since we're in space. And weight is not an issue, but mass is something we can measure. So I'm going to see if I can just burn, hit shift just a teensy little bit and trim that periapsis down just slightly. There we go. 260,000. Okay, that is us. So let's shift out of map mode. There's Kerbin spinning beneath us, looking gorgeous. And now it's time for us to say goodbye and go on our merry way. I'm going to turn so you guys can get a good look at Kerbin as we head off into, into space. In fact, I'll get rid of the UI so it looks even prettier. Pretty cool. It's the point of being in space if you can't see awesome, awesome stuff like that. All right. Swing the view around here. There's the moon. We can wave as we pass on by. I'm going to actually go to the map screen. Okay. So you can see that we're actually, our encounter, we're going to swing out a little beyond Minmus first before we grab our, before we grab our encounter here. slow down so I get a better bead on where our encounter is. Wow, are we coming at the South Pole? That's crazy. <laughs> That's weird. Yeah, it looks like we're flying over the South Pole. Huh. You don't see that very often. That's okay, though. We can work with that. Okay. Here we are swinging all the way out. Hit our apoapsis. Okay, we're about to come into Minmus' sphere of influence. I'm actually going to take the map view off just so I can swing around. There's Kerbin and the moon. And there is our target, Minmus. Oh, actually, we can go ahead and just turn this ass off. There's, there she is. Okay, let's speed up a little bit. We'll see exactly where our periapsis is when we get into that sphere of influence. You'll see the computer changes how it tracks your. There we go. Uh, not exactly over the South Pole, but we are definitely coming in <laughs> at a strange angle. All right. Well, hey, we're uh, we're at a new location, so let's go ahead and hit nine to run all of our science experiments. Material study, definitely keep that. Crew report, keep it. Atmospheric scan, keep it. Temperature scan, keep it. Mystery goo observation, keep it. Mystery goo observation number two, don't need it. We'll reset it. EVA. Grab our EVA report. Yeah. Okay. This is a little onerous. But it's worth it for all that sweet, sweet science we're getting. Take data, store experiments, hop on board. Okay. 
we are set. So what we want to do is burn retrograde to circularize or at least capture around Minmus here. Boom. Okay. So that gives us a pretty high apoplasis. And you can see that it's not going to take much delta V to do what we want to do. I'm going to get go ahead and burn a little harder. Near circular. Okay. This will be a much more efficient way to do it. So so yes, maneuver. So we're going to actually do a series of burns to try to shorten our uh, shorten our orbit just enough. Okay, our node is in two hours, so let's go ahead and speed up as we come in towards small, dark, rocky Minmus. want to miss it and slow down. You can see our relative velocity is not terribly fast for such a small object with such low gravity. Which is good. It's one of the reasons we're doing this instead of landing on the moon. Okay. Let's give our SAS a chance to just make a minimal correction. All right, so we've got a 13 second burn. So we're going to burn at T minus six. Oh, missed it. <laughs> Should be okay though. All we need to do is really capture, which we did. So, okay, great. How much fuel we got left in the stage? Oh, plenty. Okay, now we're going to burn retrograde at apoapsis to shorten our periapsis to a nice 41,000, I want to get about 20,000. There's some pretty high mountains, uh, 17s I think, okay. There's some pretty high mountains on Minmus that we really don't want to hit. That's what I'm trying to avoid by keeping our our height high. We could probably have just brute forced ourselves into orbit, but the right, the quote unquote right way to do it is to do what we're doing: burning at apoapsis and periapsis to maximize your fuel usage. See the SAS is having an even easier time turning the ship now. Okay, and we're gonna speed up. So this is a super short burn, and I'm gonna do the entire thing from the map screen. Oh shoot, I way missed it. Ugh. Okay. Gotta be real careful. <laughs> real careful with warp for that reason. Wasting fuel, but oh well. We've got enough. Intentionally overpacked. Okay. Alright, so in order to circularize, we've got one more burn at the periapsis. And we're going to burn retrograde, and you can see it will not be a huge one. Just simply bring our apoapsis down. Let's call it 22. That's probably going to be good. What was our, yeah, so that's a 44 delta V burn. That's good. The reason I want, swing around so you guys can see Minmus here, wherever she is. I think actually we're in such a crazy orbit, it's going to be hard to find. Is she underneath us? There's Kerbin. <laughs> I don't know how you lose a giant moon you're orbiting around, but... Ah, there we go. Yeah. So 
So you got to be super careful with the warp, <laughs> so you don't just warp right past your maneuver node like I just did. So we got a w estimated one second burn. <laughs> so we're gonna just get as close to that node as we can, swinging around Minmus. You can see it. Lots. Of the terrain here is very uneven. In certain parts of it, but. You can see we're about to swing over. It's got these really wide, flat areas, which is awesome for learning how to land. And since that's what we're going to be doing on this mission, that's why we wanted to come here in the first place. I just hope our orbit actually takes us over one of them. If not, we're going to be landing on something like that big mesa. Which is fine. It's just a little more risky. But hey, we wouldn't be strapping ourselves to giant explosives if we weren't all about risk. Okay. I forgot to swing the maneuver around, or the SAS over to the maneuver indicator, so we may miss our node by a second or two, but I think that should be fine. So I'm going to do this burn entirely from the map mode so you can see how it works. And I am probably not even going to hit Z to f power up all the way. I'm just going to do this with shifting, using shift to... Okay, here we go. I'm actually going to start burning now. Yep, just a little burn to take us down. Down, down, down. Oh, man. It doesn't get much better than that. And there we are. There's Midmus beneath us. All right. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and pause the video here. And we're also going to save our game. Uh, and then I will see you guys next time as we come around our uh, moon that we have just... Oh, yeah. There's good landing areas. Good. Yeah, we're, we'll be cool for landing. Um, as we come around the moon, we have just encountered and land our ship. Until then, uh, thanks very much for watching. Have a good one.